Hey, good morning everybody. John here with FMP Wargamers and this is the FMP Morning Show. Just realized that one of my lights is not on. One second, Porpo Boar. Alright. And the Lord saith, let there be light. Or let there be non-energy efficient lights going <laughs> right at my electric bill. So welcome to FMP Wargamers. And this is our FMP morning show. We've been doing this for well over a year now. FMP Wargamers has been around for oh goodness, four or five years now. And we've started off small, gotten big, gotten small, gotten big again. So what we're doing now as we're trying to expand is keep up gaming news especially in regards to <coughs> goodness excuse me warhammer news from games workshop <coughs> i gotta drink some coffee oh my god live show people this is the troubles with live shows i don't have the the cough it's just something stuck in my throat <coughs> goodness now that you have to be worried about me coughing on you from uh, this distance as far as I know, that the COVID-19 has not evolved into a techno virus. So, besides just covering Warhammer news, uh, we also are, have been broadening out outside of Games Workshop and covering news for comics a little bit, RPGs, other tabletop miniature games, uh, and any other game-related news. And there's a lot, a lot to cover. So let's get into it for the for today. This is what Wednesday, the September second. So hey, we made it to September. No meteorite has crashed down. We haven't been invaded by aliens. Cthulhu did not rise. So I think we're doing pretty good. All right, enough of the nonsense. Uh, do my ever uh, or my always consistent uh, refresh of the Warhammer community page because that's mainly what we built our kingdom upon. Uh, so I want to talk about an article that came out yesterday from Games Workshop. Uh, this is their top nine space marine killers. Even I had to kind of giggle at this. Um, and, and of course, a lot of the competitive players out there giggled too. And I, if I'm giggling at something that... Games Workshop is putting, you know, to combat space marines, and you know, <laughs> it's it's uh, a bit ridiculous, um, especially when I'm in sync with um, the uh, tournament or event participant or players, because uh, we're all competitive players. I've said that before. So I'm going to lead into something else, a future uh, thing that we're going to be doing on the channel here. But they go through a an all right list of nine different type of units to deal with space marines, especially since all the space marines from the firstborn or the classic marines, if you will, to the primaris have all have a base of two wounds. Though I don't know if that means four scouts yet, so don't quote me on that. But uh, that has kind of turned into a, a sore point. So now it's like it looks like everything across the almost everything across the board or maybe even 50 percent of all weapons now at least are doing two points of damage so it, it it seems like the purpose of giving primaris marines two wounds has pretty much been pointless i mean it the some of the things that made primaris marines unique over the firstborn is now is not really i mean oh, what now they've get uh, one extra attack and they've got a a bolt gun that goes or that a bolt rifle that has minus one ap versus the bolt gun that doesn't it seems you know why take the primaris now to go to the classic marines now i've talked about this in a in a past episode and that past episode highlighted how G games workshop and i've talked about this since uh, at least last year maybe the year before, that classic Marines, that's your basic Marines, before the Primaris came out, are going away in about five, at that at the time I said it was about five to ten years, and it's been 
well, five to 10 years from the beginning of eighth edition. We're three years in, so now we're what, two to seven years away. And some people have pushed back. John, they just gave new box art, uh, new rules for the classic Marines. So why would they be getting rid of them to get you to buy them? The classic Marines are cheaper point-wise, not money-wise, point-wise. They are now on par with the Primaris Marines, which ha- which cost more point-wise, not necessarily money-wise. They want to get rid of those classic Marines. And one of the ways that they used to get rid of classic models is move them to made-to-order and then moved them to uh, like a direct or, or made to order or sorry, uh, web store only and then made to order last chance to buy. That's pretty much a step that they've done to get rid of models. And it, it I mean, my guess is light success, light success. So how, how else are they going to push that product? Because they can, of course, recycle that pl- plastic. They have these machines that you throw the sprues in. I've been there. I've been suckered into oh i get a free space marine sprue fantastic oh wait i gotta put it in the grinder and watch it get grind up i got tricked like everybody else uh it literally grinds up the plastic sprues and puts it through a process of melting it and making it available for the injection molds for the die cast molds that get us all of our uh, plastic miniature kits And they can do that, but it's a loss of money, not from the perspective of the plastic, but from the perspective of everything that goes into the box and the packaging, everything inside of it. That is the highest cost of those boxes, mind you. So they can do that process, but it loses them money. So how, what's the best way to do it since the other process only gets a little bit of money and then they can recycle and really then lose money. So they can gain a little bit of money, then lose the money. It's really a no-win situation. So what do we do? We turn classic Marines into the equivalent of Primaris Marines, except in game terms, they are cheaper to run. So everybody that's going into ninth edition are like, dude, uh, let's buy up tactical squads, devastator squads, um, assault squads, let's rack it up because they're cheaper to use than the Primaris, not point uh, money-wise, but point-wise, and I can field more of them. So cool, let's do it. It's brilliant. It's really brilliant, if not a little shady. So they can still probably through this edition is sell down their existing product of the Firstborn, and then as they get to a critical level, they will slowly reprint, slowly reprint, uh, or uh, re- whatever you call it. I'm just saying reprint those uh, stocks that are going down, but they're going to only reprint X amount because they don't want to flood the market again and have shelves upon shelves in their warehouses in Memphis and in Nottingham full of these boxes, these models. So you will see probably in the next year to, I'm going to say year and a half, I bet, I'm betting, maybe let's just say uh, 2020, this time 2022, that gives us two years. You will see Classic Marines um, definitely leaving all the trade, um, trade accounts, so your local game store and the Warhammer and Games Workshop stores will lose those. Um, lose those on the shelf. They will not be in the shelf. They will slowly go to made to or, or um, uh, online order probably in the next two years. And then probably about two years, within two years after that, made to order. And then done. I think that's what's going to happen based on what we're seeing. So how does this all tie into this article about the nine space brain killers? Here we go. So the nine space brain killers... I mean, if you are not a, if you're not playing the game to have the really cool models and just enjoy the story, enjoy the hobby, and, but you're looking for the most efficient way to play the game, um, I'm going to tell you right now, do your best not to trust Games Workshop's articles in regards to these are the best units to use 
because we need to sell them because we've got a lot of them and we want to sell them because we got new model kits coming or we got new kits coming and we want to sell, sell, sell. That is, I mean, they're a company that's, I mean, it sounds shady, but they're trying to make money. If you need advice, if you need advice, and here's the tie-in I talked about earlier, go to websites like Goonhammer, uh, go to Frontline Gaming, uh, Blood of Kittens, and, oh, there's another one I can't think of, Tizka, um, Tizka.com, they, uh, I think it's Tizka Podcast, uh, Tizka, yeah, Tizka, oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Tiska podcast. Okay, um, podcast that's really on iTunes, um, but somewhere there we go. You can just type in Tiskin podcast. Sorry, Tiskin podcast, and they give great advice out for mainly Thousand Sons, but they have a a strong folk or a strong focus on Thousand Sons. But they do talk about other army lists and how to essentially for a thousand sons to go up against them. Um, I know the individual that runs this and absolutely spot on with his analysis. And he gets on a lot of guest uh, uh, tournament players and winners to chime in. So Tiskin Podcast, Frontline Gaming, Goonhammer, uh, uh, Blood of Kittens. Those are all great sites and in the very near future, on the uh, the blog post that we have for FMP War Gamers, and maybe if some future episodes um, on YouTube, I'm going to be reaching out to the FMP at uh, the FN Pro team to focus like, hey, what is your main army? Give us a breakdown of your tournament list or what you think is a good tournament list because you might not want to reveal your secrets, and give us a breakdown of of how you would play it what the purpose is of it is for ninth edition. So you're going to get pro team advice uh, from all these different websites. Uh, Go to them first. Well, you know what? Go to games workshop first. Let's take a look. Exocrines, number one killer of space Marines. Uh, Hell drinks. (laughs) Ravagers. Uh, These are probably very likely relatively good units but there's more efficient units and that's the issue this is probably about sales demon princes mega knobs uh, triarch praetorians anyone and anything with a heavy polter that one i can agree with that one probably should be closer to the top because it's going to be the most likely being the most point efficient out of all those that they've already shown and of course gene stiller cult aberrants i'm not too sure i think they're a little point heavy for what they do but i'm going to talk to eric our resident gene stealer cult player about that one and of course blade guard veterans now blade guard veterans i mean you guys know i pretty much simp for space marines but i think they're very solid units only a three-man unit but it's a three-man unit putting out um i think around 24 points of damage from their attacks on a charge approximately so i i think they're really solid. I think it's a three or four wound unit. They've got a two up armor save, four up invulnerable save, a two damage weapon, and at least three attacks base. Plus I think the sergeant's got a four attacks base and they get an additional attack on the charge. And if they manage to survive, I believe there's that ta- there's a stratagem that lets them at the end of the phase, if they're still alive, you can have them fight again. So they can be, if, if the math works out right, you can put out uh, see, that's on, on the charge. That's 3, 6, 10, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 times 2. It's 26 damage on the charge. Fight again at the end of the phase. is still that phase that you charged in. So that's an, if that works out, that's 52 damage that you could potentially put out. So I believe that they're a solid unit. And um, Aberrants maybe. Heavy bolter units, yes. I think these two, those two should be closer to the top. So if you see articles like this that Games Workshop's putting out, so I can wrap this up and we can move on, take a look at what they're saying. Stay off the Facebook pages that are that are tournament play uh tournament uh discussion groups because most of them are absolute filth and garbage. That 
Uh, it's really just fanboyism, and you don't get a, a lot of a, a, a solid analysis or breakdown. You get it from a fanboy's perspective instead of an overall perspective, and it usually turns that turns into a I hate using a term, but a toxic bitch fest of. Uh, um, well, we hate Space Marines. We hate this. We hate this. This is BS. Why don't we get this? Why don't we have you know two wound Primaris Eldar? Whatever. Um, and that's what it'll boil down to. And it usually turns into an argument. The the post gets um, locked for comments, and you move on. Go to these other websites. It's a little bit more solid. Like I said, Goonhammer, Frontline Gaming. Tiskin prod, uh, podcast, which I've, uh, I'll make sure all these are on the YouTube description and on our Facebook page when I uh, upload the link later on for the FMP Wargamers Facebook page and Blood of Kittens, for example. And then, of course, in the very, very near future, the FMP Wargamers uh, webpage. Uh, we'll start having a breakdown. So, moving on, so we can start, we got a lot to cover. So, uh, was it last year? I believe it was last year, maybe the year before. So 2018, November 2018, I believe. Or was it November 2019? Recently. <laughs> uh, Games Workshop allied with Bandai to only do 9,000 copies of these. Like 42 points of articulation, 8 inch tall, amazing Space Marine action figures for lack of a better term. And I mean, they sold out in minutes. I mean, just absolutely minutes. And they are, they are right now, I believe going for approximately 250 to about, I've seen one at $359. I think that was a, a, a regular auction instead of buy now. Uh, and I mean, you can still get them, but you're going to be paying a premium. Um, and if you manage to secure one, you are lucky. Keep it in a box. It's a collector's item automatically. So what, good news do we have they are now expanding to two more since it was so successful that was essentially a way for games workshop to do a kickstarter without doing a kickstarter it was proof of concept and it proved remarkably well so we got two new ones coming and the first one first one will be an imperial fist with uh looks like an uh I think that'll count as an auto bolt rifle with an underslung grenade launcher. It's going to have the full range, just like the other one, 42 points of the articulation. We'll go through some photos here in a second. And we'll also have this amazing looking salamander. Look at that guy. That looks badass. Uh, and it looks like uh, that's not a stalker rifle, even though he's got the longer scope. I think that's just a regular bolt rifle. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a regular bolt rifle. If the if the magazine or clip was um, wasn't the sickle version, it was just straight down. That would be a stalker bolt rifle, which is basically the sniper version for the squad. Um, you can see what you can do with the model. I mean, they did great job, great paint job. Um, everything about this is super highly detailed. I freaking love it. I'm an Imperial Fist fan, really, an Exorcist or not exorcist, um, excoriator fan, which is a second founding of the Imperial fist. So really cool. Uh, this is badass. I, I'm, I think I'm reaching my critical foul language limit. So I'll have to kind of dial it back now. I'll have to say the B word or something. Um, and then salamander, the same thing. I mean, dude, very, very on point. Now, um, what is going to be a let's see uh, 53 points of articulation? I'm sorry, each leg alone has 12. Each leg has 12 points of articulation. <laughs> now, these will uh, be available. You can pre order them um, from Saturday, the 12th of September. Now, don't panic, they'll be available to order for one week and delivered into your eager hands next year after being made to, made to order by Bandai. Now, don't worry about us selling out. Everyone who orders a figure will get one. There's no way the Imperial Fist would be found derelict in their duty after all. So, you have one week. So, September 12th, which is not this coming Saturday, 
but the following Saturday, so 10 days from now. So you have from the 12th to either the 18th or 19th of September to secure their copy, and it's probably going to be the $99 or $100 for it. So this is a, a second opportunity for you to secure one or add to your collection. I'm going to move on. So with the COVID-19 and everything that's going on right now, the pandemic worldwide, we can't really get too much into having armies on parade, which sucks because I love armies on parade. It's going to be even tougher um, this year. So uh, here's a couple examples of armies on parade. Basically, uh, you I believe you have to have like three units on the board. It has to be, I think, a maximum size of two foot by two foot or two foot square. Yeah, two foot square. Uh, there's no limit on the height. That's just on you for convenience sake. You uh, basically do your absolute best to convey everything about Warhammer 40,000 or Age of Sigmar, Middle Earth, whatever, uh, whatever their main product lines are or their, their specialist games. And you're going to compete. You Normally you compete at your local games workshop or Warhammer store. Um, and whoever got the most votes would win. Now, that's not going to happen because everything that's going on. So you have between now, or sorry, uh, from November 2nd to November 29th to paint up your display board, paint up your army, and enter it with high quality pictures um, on the army's, uh, on the submission lo- or submission website that they'll have on um, probably Warhammer community page, probably a link to it as we get closer to that time. Now, the winners will be announced in September, or sorry, December, sometime after we'll have a big Twitch channel for it. So competition is going to be a little fiercer because we're going to be going up worldwide. I don't know how they're going to break it down, but they'll break it down. We'll let them worry about it. Um, I'm still going to try it. Because why not? What's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to lose. I'm going to have an amazing display board for my models. What do I care? Um, So keep that in mind. As we get closer, I'll make sure I keep you guys informed. Uh, Some more gaming news. Because I've got, man, i got a lot of crazy news. I'm trying to get this wrapped up. Uh, For you Elder Scrolls fans, Skyrim fans out there, you love the video games. Uh, There is, over at Modifius.com, Dot net. They do a lot of RPGs and the Fallout miniature, uh, tabletop miniature war game. They have the Elder, Elder Scrolls uh, Call to Arms game. Um, they've got all sorts of miniatures. They have STL files if you want to print your own terrain. Uh, the miniatures are, uh, in my opinion, absolutely amazing. They are really solid quality, um, for especially for a company that is not a... Um, a miniature wargaming company. They put out some solid models. You can see there, uh, we have some Imperial Legion models there. You got a mage, got some of their basic warriors. And looks like a main character would be, probably somebody that would be a main character. Maybe you out, uh, for those of you that played uh, Skyrim or Elder Scrolls, maybe you align with the Imperial uh, Legion. But they've got it for, as I scroll, the website's a little wonky, so I'm not going to go too much more into it. Uh, but Adventurer Followers, we're definitely going to click on those. Allies, you have your Dragonborn character, for those of you that like, um, yeah, you love the idea of the Dragonborn. Actually, we're going to look at all these, because why not? We love our miniatures here. Um, Elder Scroll characters, uh, they've got a variety here. Looks like the li- a lizard. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're gonna try to look at them all here. Lizard man. Uh, oh, look at that, dude. Look at the detail on these miniatures. These are absolutely bonkers, crazy. Even if you uh, just do like RPGs, these are awesome. Um, they are now available. Um, since we're getting some del- uh, screen skipping. I'm just going to stop looking at them because uh, for some reason my uh, the, the channel does not like it. So moving on from there, Star Wars fans, Star Wars Legion fans, rejoice. I think they're already out. Actually, I know they're already out. ARC Troopers unit expansion. So uh, you get a bunch of ARC Troopers. I think there's five or six ARC Troopers in there with a variety of weapon options and, and jump packs. So if you're a fan of the Star Wars uh, Clone Wars 
um, animated series or the uh, prequels, and you love the ARC troopers, the uh, Republic Republic Army. They got a brand new box set out. Even though I don't play the game, I'm really excited about these, the BX series Droid Commandos. They really popped up in the Clone Wars cartoon. I thought they were a great unit. This one is a really awesome looking unit because they have sniper rifles, blasters, blaster pistols, vibro swords, a whole variety of uh, upgrades. So whether you play the Separatist or the Republic, you now have these awesome units that are now ready to ready for you to play. So just a little thing out there for trying to keep everybody in the know. Uh, so I'm going to move on real quick here. Oops, um, I'm trying to get to the right thing. Here we go. All right, John Wick fans, Keanu Reeves fan, which is probably pretty much everybody in the world. If you, uh, it, I think it's a little hard for you not to like Keanu Reeves. Um, looks like I'm having some issues with this website, so I'm not going to. Let's get rid of a couple of these other tabs I got going. Um, Kickstarter, and I'll get this on the Facebook page as well, and in the description of the YouTube upload. Um, Keanu Reeves has partnered up with some fantastic artists and uh, authors and through Boom Studios to do Berserker. It's his comic book. It's on Kickstarter right now. I'll make sure you guys have that link. Essentially, you're following a character that's kind of based on Keanu Reeves. But in this case, uh, I'm not, I'll let you read all the details and watch the little video. He'll talk about it. Half mortal, half God, cursed and compelled to violence. Uh, even at the, even if he has to sacrifice his sanity, um, they've got a whole bunch of uh, different versions, and they got a bunch of stuff to unlock. So if you're a fan of comic books, graphic novels, uh, you're tired of the <sighs> get woke, go broke crap you're getting from DC Comics and Marvel Comics, who have just really there's everything about them is tanking. Um, because of identity politics uh, that they're forcing into their comic books. And I mind you, I'm a pro proponent for, um, I'm an ally, um, member of the LGBT community, all that. But when you force it, it just, it's just disingenuous. You're just getting it for clicks, so to speak, or just trying to make money off of it. Uh, Disney does this. It's just really disgusting. Now here, I, I've been watching a lot of Indie, Indiegogo and Kickstarter program or uh, um, projects where independent art artists and authors are actually going there to publish, and they are just knocking it out of the park. Uh, now this series, Berserker, it's got uh, three different graphic novels. So you won't have to worry about collecting every issue for a year or whatever. Um, they got the multiple tiers, including uh, hardcover editions, exclusive hardcover editions, um, exclusive limited edition del <laughs> deluxe box sets, um, the entire set, all the way up to this amazing, oh, the gunmetal one looks awesome, but not for $500. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, I can't justify that. Uh, they even have an amazing one here at $2,500. So if you happen to have that to spare, you can end up having a character or you can end up appearing in the comic. That's kind of awesome. Uh, they got a whole bunch of stretch goals. Uh, I mean, the artwork is really good. I'm, in, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far. I think it's going to be a good comic. Um, I Because I really don't, think that nowadays maybe back when he was younger he did a lot of a lot of questionable uh quality movies but counter reeves now is very cognizant of his brand and he's only backing up stuff that um he he puts his trust and faith in i mean he devotes that time and energy to it um if he's doing that it's worth taking a look at so I'll get that up on, um, get that in the chat groups too, so you guys can see that. So with all that said, in the coming weeks we'll have our first, or we'll start the new uh, blogs for uh, get, uh, for our FM Pro team. Hopefully, as well, unless we have any hiccups for getting the articles written about their favorite armies, how to operate them, 
what to you know what's their worst matchups and how to prepare for it that sort of thing and their impressions of ninth edition we're going to get that at the very start uh as a blog post and if that if the, or not blog post but on the web web page as an article if those do well we get a lot of likes and follows a lot of feedback from all of you then we're going to up it and start doing some videos for it too so we need your support all right so last little uh shameless self-promotion uh havoc maker studio tonight 7 30 p.m we are going to be working on some french and um, english um war miniatures <laughs> and i'm not sure what else oh god of course i know what else we're going to be working on some other special guest edition zombie side models, um, working on different textures. I had some requests on some, uh, how to, maybe how to do some scratches and battle damage to armor, how to do some fur. And we're going to be going through that as a, essentially a tutorial tonight. So stay tuned for that tonight, 7 30 PM. Uh, I appreciate you guys and gals out there watching the channel, supporting it. Um, if you're new to it, make sure you hit the subscribe, uh, down below. Hey, Texas war gamer, uh, hit the follow, uh, wh whatever medium you're on, head over to twitch TV slash FMP war gamers, plural or FMP war gamers over on YouTube and hit the, that follow and subscribe button. Make sure you comment on the videos over at YouTube because that makes uh, that highlights the video, makes it easier for you to find and shows us that you guys are enjoying the content and you would like more. Um, and, and uh, you know what, if there's something about the content that we put out there that you're not happy with, or maybe you would like us to do a certain way, or maybe there's some content you want us to, to go over, let us know in the comments. If you don't let us know, we can't cover you. We got you fam. You just got to let us know. So with that, my name is John. This is FNP Wargamers FNP Morning Show. I'll see you tonight, 7.30 p.m. Central Time on Havoc Maker Studio. Or I will see you Friday morning, 10 a.m. right here on FNP Morning Show. Have yourself a wonderful and safe social distance day. See you guys later.